Hi, and welcome to this uh, unit, this new lesson about acceleration and circular motion. Uh, I think I just, I want to address the question about how can something be moving at constant speed and accelerating at the same time. So let's imagine we've got an object and it's, it's moving around in this circle at a constant speed. So we could consider, well, how about when it's at this position A, and then maybe later on it's at this position over here b well when it's a position a what is its velocity its velocity well i don't know let's say it's going five meters per second but what direction is it going well at position a it would be going this direction and remember we can think of it as perpendicular to that radius so that would be the direction it would be going at point a so we could call this one maybe va in that direction how about at point B? Well, at point B, it would be going about this direction. A little bit hard to draw it because, again, it's about 90 degrees to that. So this would be at point B. Uh, so you'll notice that the direction is changing for the velocity. And so therefore, just by a simple definition, what is acceleration? Acceleration is the change in velocity. So if our definition of acceleration is the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by how much time it goes, what I'd like to do is I'd like to think a little bit more clearly about what this change in velocity is. Well, the change in something is always the second one minus the first one. So in this situation, I guess this would be the velocity at B minus the velocity at A. Well, Oh, you know, I need some more space here, so let me just uh, rearrange things. So if I want to think about how to subtract these two vectors, well, one way is I could say the velocity of B is this arrow here. So it would be like this arrow, subtract this arrow. Hope that makes some sense. Now, how do we subtract vectors? Well, one way, if you recall, when we maybe first learned integers, is that if we subtracted 3 minus negative 2, what we could do instead is we could say 3 plus uh, positive 2, and then you know the answer was quite easy. So our rule was we could subtract things by adding the opposite. So for negative 2, it's pretty easy to figure out that the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. For this one, the one that's subtracting is the second arrow that's going to the right, the opposite of that. So if I could say, like this arrow, plus the opposite of this arrow. So what's the opposite of going to the right? It's going to the left. Does that make sense to you? Okay, I hope so. So we're going to subtract these two, which turns into adding this opposite one. So what does that look like if we add them together? Well, you may recall how it works when we do uh, tip to tail kind of stuff. I drew the first arrow, and then from the, the end of this, draw the second arrow like this. This piece here would be my change in the velocity, right? If it'd be VA, uh, well, in fact, this one was VB, wasn't it? VB, and this one is minus VA, then this piece over here would be the change in the velocity. So if I look at this arrow and I say, well, halfway in between, sort of like the average of where they are, would be about here. The change in the velocity is actually towards the center of that circle. So um, the acceleration was going to be equal to this, uh, actually I should say the change over the amount of time. So maybe really here, I'll just change this and I'll say this is all the change in the velocity. So this is the, this would be my qualitative diagram of showing that the change in the velocity is towards the center. If I look at my little check for understanding here, if this is the beginning set of velocity and this is the final velocity for a ball, was there acceleration? Uh, well, no, it, it stayed the same. No, if, if yes, which direction? Here, was there acceleration? Yes. And if so, in which direction? I would say it would be to the right. Uh, or we might say positive, right? Can you finish three, four, question three and question four there and see if you get the right things? Um, just hit pause.
and then do those two questions and then come back. I would say for question three, yes, there's acceleration and it's to the left. Is ex the acceleration is to the left because it got a smaller number to the right. Number four, I would say yes, and again, it's to the left. Um, how about over here? Could you try these four questions and then uh, hit pause and then come back? All right, if the object is moving in a clockwise position uh, at point B, the velocity vector will be straight down. So that answer would be D. Uh, which vector is the acceleration from point C? Well, the acceleration is going to be towards the center. And so that one would be B. Which vector represents the direction of the velocity at point C? The velocity at point C would be tangent. It would look like this one. So the answer would be A. Which vector below represents the direction of the acceleration vector when it's located at point A? And this would be towards the center. Oh, I'm not doing very well. <laughs> so it would be D. Okay. Ah, I hope that's helpful. And you have a, uh, a quick little sheet to work on. And there is an associated mop to work on. Thank you and see you in class.